This is video number 39 now from digital-university.org. Um, we're going to, again, take a look at the super node technique in this video and use it to solve a circuit that incorporates both current and voltage sources. Um, incidentally, if you just found us on YouTube, if you can go to the website at digital-university.org, all the videos so far that we have prepared for the electrical circuit analysis techniques, um, you find the whole playlist there. Okay, what we're going to do is to get started, consider this circuit that for the moment incorporates only current sources. And we're going to look at it, determine where the nodes are, and determine what the node voltages are. Then we're going to modify the circuit by removing this resistor and replacing it with a voltage source. And then again, go back and determine what the node voltages are. So let's get started here. The first thing we have to do is determine where are the nodes in this circuit. Obviously down here in the bottom, uh, we have a single node. And in fact, this single node is grounded. So this is at zero potential. And then here we have a node where this branch, this branch, this branch, and this branch all flow into that node. And we don't know what the voltage of that node is, so we just, for the moment, call it V1. And here's another node where this branch goes into it, this branch, this branch, and this branch. And that second node, we'll say, is that voltage V2. And then here would be another node. This flows into it. This branch flows into it. This branch flows into it. And so does this one. And we'll say that that is at a voltage of V3. So using the format technique that we have developed now uh, in some of the previous videos, let's go ahead and determine what these three unknown voltages are. Then we're going to stop there. We're not going to take the problem any further. Obviously, once you know these voltages, then you can quite easily determine the currents through all of the resistors in the circuit here. OK, so let's see. Let's start here at node 1. We have this resistor of 1 third ohms and this resistor of 1 fourth ohms. So take the reciprocal, 3 plus 4 times V1. That would be 7 times V1. So here we are at node 1 using the format approach. And so far we have 7 times V1. And then this end of the resistor is at voltage V2. So you have minus the reciprocal. 3 times V2. This end of the resistor is at voltage V3, so we have minus 4 times V3. And let's see, for this node, 8 amps flowing out of the node, 3 amps flowing out of the node, that's a total of 11 amps flowing out of node 1. And since that 11 amps flow out of the node, we write it on this side of the equation with a negative sign. So there's the node 1 equation. Let's quickly proceed on to node 2. And what do we have? This resistor, this resistor, and this resistor are part of node 2. So we have 3 plus 2 is 5, plus 1 is 6V2. Notice how uh, select the format approach works here. OK, 6 times V2. This is at, the other end is at potential V1. So you have minus 3 times V1. Of course, we're taking the reciprocal values of these resistors, as you've been doing in all the other uh, videos. And here, this end of this resistor is at potential V3. So you have minus 2 
times V3. And here, there are three amps of current flowing into the node. So we write the three on this side, and that's with a positive sign. Okay, let's move on to node three. And here we have this resistor, this resistor, and this resistor. So we have taking the reciprocals and adding five, seven, eleven times V three. And this end is at for the resistor is at potential V two. So you have minus two V two. This end of the resistor of this resistor is at voltage V one. So you have minus four V one. And twenty five amps of current are flowing into the node. So again I'm written on this side of the equation, the current part, and that's a positive sign because it's going into the node. So we have three unknowns we want to solve for. This voltage, this voltage, and this voltage. And again, using the format approach of each of the nodes, we have one, two, three equations. Three unknowns, three equations. Now, Here's the, the equation from node 1, 7V1 minus 3 times V2 minus 4 times V3 equals negative 11. From node 2, minus 3 times V1 plus 6 times V2 minus 2 times V3 and that equals plus 3. And from node 3, minus 4 times V1. And minus 2 times V2 plus 11 times V3 and that equals plus 25. Okay, these are the three node equations that we obtained using the uh, format approach. And this then sets us up for determining V1, V2, and V3. And as you saw us do in the previous videos, we make a, the V1 column of these numbers, the V2 column with these numbers, the V3 column using these numbers so that we have a 3 by 3 determinant. And we also are going to use this information. And again, we're not going to go through all the calculations. We've done it many times in the previous videos. It's old news by now. But here is the V1 column, the V2 column, the V3 column. We have this 3 by 3 determinant um, using the method of minor expansion, as you saw us do many times now. You will know that you can determine that this has a numerical value of 191. And these numbers here, these were just what the three equations were equal to. Negative 11, 3, and 25. Negative 11, 3, and 25. Now we're all set up. Now to determine V1, replace the V1 column with this column. The V2 column and the V3 column stay the same. Now we have this 3 by 3 determinant determine its numerical value and divide that number by 191 and you see that V1 is plus 1 volt. Now to determine V2, replace the V2 column with this. The V1 and the V3 column stay the same and we now have this 3 by 3 determinant. Expand it by minors, determine its numerical value, Divide that number by 191, and you see V2 is plus 2 volts. Now to determine V3, replace this column with these numbers. Right here, it gives us this 3 by 3 determinant. 
determine its numerical value, divide by 191, and V3 is 3 volts. So we go back to our circuit. This is 1 volt, 2 volts, and 3 volts. Okay, very well. There's no surprises there and certainly no tricks. We just had to set up the three different equations at the three different nodes using the uh, format technique. Now, what we want to do is consider how would we analyze the circuit. We're going to take, remove this resistor and put in a voltage source. So now we have this circuit to deal with. How do we handle that? So what we do is, here, this was node 2, and this is node 3. And between node 2 and node 3, we now have a voltage source. And what we do then is, as you saw us do in the previous video, just ignore the voltage source. It pretend like this is just a conductor going across. So essentially what we're doing is, we're fusing the node 2 and the node 3 node 2 we said was at V2 in the previous video we're going to fuse these together into one super node which means that we ignore this, just pretend, just pretend this is a straight line going across, just a conductor, and we go ahead and we set up the equation for the super node using the format technique. We start at the V2 end, and then also at the V3 end, and we write it together into one single equation. So let's start at this end here, and we see that here we have this resistor and this resistor going in. So using the format technique, it's going to be V2 times the reciprocal of this, that's 1, times the reciprocal of that, that's 3. So from the super node so far, what we have is this and this is 4 times V2. Now this end of the resistor is at potential V1, so minus 3 times V1. And again, this is just using the format approach. Okay, now for, we had it for this resistor and this resistor, that's it for this end of the super node. Now we move over to this end of the super node. And here we're going to have at voltage V3 this resistor and this resistor. So take the reciprocals and add 5 plus 4 is 9. So plus 9 V3 and this end of the resistor is at potential V1, so we'll have minus 4 V1. And for this super node, what do we have coming into the super node? Well, here we have 3 amps of current going into it, and here we have 25 amps of current going into it. That's a total of 28 amps flowing into the super node. And it's flowing into it so that we have 28 as a positive number written on that side of the equation. So what we've done here is ignore this for the moment and just pretend this is just a conductor going across and we consider this then as one giant melted node of, v, of node 1 and node 2 recognizing that this end of the supernode is at potential V2 and this end of the supernode is at potential V3. And then we went to this end 
and wrote out the format equations that gave us this. This end of it, we wrote the format equations that gave us this, and we write it all down in one single equation from one single supernode, and then we considered what currents are going in and out of the supernode, 28 amps going into it. Also, notice here that we are at potential V2, then we have to increase it by 22 volts to get up to potential V3. So we have V2 plus 22 equals V3. We have this relationship here. Okay, and let's see, if we look at this equation, what do we have? We have 4V2 minus 3 one minus 4V1, that's minus 7V1, plus 4 times V2, plus 9V3, equals 28. So here then, is the equation from the supernode. Now, and also we have this relation. Now we have to think about, well, what about node 1? So let's see what's happening here. One third, one fourth, take the reciprocals in each case and add. This is now from node 1. One third and one fourth reciprocals for each case and add. We have seven times V1. This end of the resistor is at potential V2 minus three times V2. This end of the resistor is at voltage V3 minus four V3. And here for node one, 8 amps flowing out of the node, 3 amps flowing out of the node, that's 11 amps flowing out of node 1. So you write it on this side of the equation as negative 11. So there then is the equation from node 1. And don't forget we also had V2 plus 22 equals V3. Okay. So here we have minus 7V1 plus 4 times V2 plus 9 times V3 equals 28. Here we have 7 times V1 minus 3 times V2 minus 4 times V3 equals negative 11. And here we don't even have to use determinants to solve the unknowns. Uh, we can add these. And here we're going to have V2. These cancel when we add. Here we have V2. And here we have plus 5V3 will equal 17. And then don't forget we had this relationship. So here then we can say minus V2 plus V3 equals 22. That's from this one. So here then we have, we can certainly determine what V2 and V3 are. Then once we do that, we can backtrack and determine what V1 is. And we're not going to have enough time to do that in this video, so come back, join us in the next video, and we should get this problem taken care of pretty quickly.